The 2016 legislative session has started. It's a short session scheduled to last only 60 days. So what are some of the issues that you think the legislature will be dealing with this year? You know, last, uh, last legislative session was a record long legislative section, session. We took um, six months to negotiate a $38 billion budget. Part of that $38 billion budget was the largest um, investment in education, K-12 in education in recent memory in decades. So as we go move forward into this now supplemental budget session, we are meant here to make small tweaks to things that we missed or should have um, that didn't get worked on before. Uh, you know, oftentimes caseloads change, um, the, the requirements of programming changes, sometimes there's uh, things there that just need to be updated. That's what this session is all about. So we should not be, in my opinion, um, bringing bills that um, cause large investments in programming or uh, um, big spending changes because we're operating under this biennial two-year budget and we need to stick to that budget. So we also need to consider emergency funding for things that were unforeseen. So say like the wildfires over this past summer, um, those wildfires uh, were even worse, I think, than, than anybody thought they were going to be, and they ended up costing a lot more money. So we need to put some more investment into that area. So, and also there's things that come up at the federal level that might, uh, might trigger uh, federal funds coming in. So we need to be uh, ready to seize the opportunity to get some federal matching as well. So uh, we need to keep this session to 60 days like it was intended and not reopen the entire budget and make huge spending changes. What are your priorities for this session? So my priorities for this session um, haven't changed from, from the prior three sessions that I've been down here. Um, it, was, it was kind of funny, right before we started filming here today, I met with some folks from the governor's office who work on education, budgeting and education policy issues. And we talked about these very things. When it comes down to education, I'm going to continue to play defense for our local school districts and um, doing as much as I can to ensure that more workload is not, is not heaped upon their staffs at the local school district level and to do as much as I can to defend against unfunded and underfunded mandates. You know, I wish I could say that I was perfect in defending those unfunded and underfunded mandates and the workload issues. I'm not, and I don't think anybody down here in the, in the legislature is. Sometimes just really good proposals come through. But that being said, oftentimes these well-intended bills have local impacts that might differ across the state, but don't necessarily drive money or resources down to the local levels and into the classrooms where they really do belong. Um, so I'm gonna continue working on that. Also this year, and cumulative over the past couple of years, we have state agencies that I really think are out of control and in bad need of reform. The three agencies that I think are need to be focused on first are Department of Transportation and, um, quite frankly, the debacles that are coming down through that department that are really impacting traffic on the I-405 corridor, the mega projects uh, like the leaky pontoon, pontoons, Issues like that, that we need to focus on the accountability of that agency and make sure that they're delivering when they say that they're going to. Most recently, it's been the, the tragic situation with the Department of Corrections and those, those convicted felons being released early um, through, the, through the issues with their, with their software, releasing people early. Um, that agency absolutely needs to be held accountable um, already we've had two deaths attributed um, in Washington State to that issue of, of, of people being early released. And that's not even counting the people who've been involved uh, um, in assaults and other violent crimes. Uh, so we need to get to the bottom of that. First of all, we absolutely have to stop the bleeding and make sure that that practice is fixed. And then we have to go back and do a, a thorough investigation as to why it was allowed to continue for four years um, without uh, being fixed. And where accountability is needed, we need to bring accountability. And a moment ago, I talked a little bit about the wildfires. And since arriving down here um, earlier this week, I've talked to a few of my uh, colleagues from east of the mountains that talked about issues with DNR and their firefighting uh, ability. Their ability to effectively partner with other local agencies and other local entities to seize the opportunity to use local resources to, to fight those fires and, and limit lives lost, 
limit uh, damage property and people's private private lives that are just um, torn apart by these wildfires. I heard some very tragic stories about DNR and their incident command not fully recognizing the uh, the impacts of their bad decisions. So we need to have some accountability there and make some policy changes to to really affect DNR as well. So you know, as 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 you we all know, you know, my job as a state legislator is to work with my citizens and making sure that the state agencies that they're seeking services from not only are held accountable but are providing the customer service that's necessary. And I see that as being um, probably the largest, largest part of my job. So any of my constituents out there in the 10th District that are having issues with, sta with state agencies, I hope they call me or one of my seatmates to, to, uh, to try to affect that. What would you say to citizens who wonder whether they should get involved this session? So that's, you know, that's uh, another favorite part of my job is having constituent contact and, and listening to folks, getting their input as to um, how they feel about individual policy proposals and um, how they feel that I should vote on them. That input to me is very critical. I receive uh, hundreds of emails a day and I really do appreciate that input from my citizens. So that's one way for citizens to be involved um, in the process is to communicate with me via email. Um, they can call the, the legislative hotline and leave me a voicemail that my assistant and I will, will listen to and react to and give them some feedback on that. And another way for, for the youth to be involved in, in the legislative process is through the legislative page program. Um, if you go to the, to the legislative web page, www.ledge.wa.gov, right on the left-hand toolbar, there's a, a tab for the legislative page program. The students participating there have to be at least 14 years old, but not yet 17. And it's a great experience, a great social experience, a great learning experience for those, for those children. I really do uh, encourage people to be involved, and I encourage our youth to be involved in the legislative process as well.